All right, folks, so in today's video, we're going to talk a little bit about the differences between the Nano VNA and the Tiny SA. It's a question I'm often asked, and people are wondering things like, can I check SWR with a Tiny SA? And can I test the spectral purity of my HT with my Nano VNA? You can't do either of those things. Part of the confusion lies in the devices look very, very similar. Here I have a couple of examples. These are the original Tiny SA and Nano VNA with a 2.8 inch screen. While these are very capable tools, I recommend the Tiny SA Ultra with its 4 inch screen and the Nano VNA H4 with its 4 inch screen. They're a little bit easier to read and they have a number of improvements over the original designs or modifications. I'll have links below to a bunch of videos in playlists that show how to use these to solve particular problems within your ham shack. Let's go ahead and get started. So the first question that we're going to answer is what's the difference? The Tiny SA and the Nano VNA are both portable, low-cost RF tools, but they serve different purposes and have distinct features. The Tiny SA is ideal for signal detection and spectrum analysis, while the Nano VNA is better suited for RF circuit testing and antenna tuning. The choice depends on whether you're more interested in monitoring signals, you would use the Tiny SA, or analyzing and optimizing RF components. There you would use the Nano VNA. When we talk about RF components in amateur radio, we're talking about antennas, transmission lines, bandpass filters, high pass filters, low pass filters, amplifiers even, things along those lines. Both are small, portable, and inexpensive compared to high-end lab instruments. And that's what's really unique about these. And it's really changed the landscape of consumer electronics, especially in the amateur radio or RF space. The Tiny SA tends to be a bit cheaper, while the Nano VNA offers a more advanced RF measurement feature set. So the Tiny SA is mainly designed for signal analysis and spectrum monitoring. It will allow you to measure things like the purity output of an amplifier or a transmitter. It allows you to observe the frequency of signals, measure signal power, and detect interference or unwanted emissions. Tiny SA models also include a basic signal generator, allowing them to output signals for testing. And this is actually very handy. One of the things the Tiny SA and the Tiny SA Ultra don't have is a tracking generator. And that's a very useful feature on more expensive modern spectrum analyzers. And what it does is it emits a signal that can be used in concert with the detection module on the Tiny SA. So you can take a measurement from a known quantity, your output tracking generator signal, and compare that with results that you're reading. It's super duper handy, and I really wish the Tiny SA and the Tiny SA Ultra had a feature like that. So the Tiny SA operates between 100 kilohertz and 350 megahertz in the standard version. Through port two, models offer higher frequencies up to around 960 megahertz. The Tiny SA Ultra goes beyond that, so we're gonna talk a little bit more about that one later and why I recommend it. Designed more for lower frequency applications, but higher frequency ranges are usually less precise with the Tiny SA. They're great for RF spectrum analysis and monitoring, such as identifying frequencies of signals in your environment, checking for RF interference, or measuring signal strength. They're really handy for amateur radio, low power RF systems, or even debugging radio systems. In terms of amateur radio, the Nano VNA is ideal for antenna tuning, impedance matching, and measuring the performance of RF filters, transmission lines, and other components. They're used when you need to understand how an RF system behaves across a frequency range, especially for precise matching of antennas and ensuring minimal signal loss. The Nano VNA is used for measuring impedance, S parameters like S11 and S21, and that's a really handy feature that you don't get on most power meters and SWR meters, like a rig expert, for example. Given that it has two ports, it allows you to compare signals that are produced by the Nano VNA on one port and then consumed by the Nano VNA on another port. And then you can look at and measure the differences. It includes a network analyzer to test the characteristic of RF networks and components showing things like return loss, standing wave ratio, and phase. They cover a wider frequency range, typically from 50 kilohertz to 1.2 gigahertz, with some models even extending higher up to several gigahertz. It's better suited for higher frequency analysis and RF network testing. So the big question is, what should I get? The short answer is both. They're both very handy and a really good complement to your amateur radio ham shack. 
But what I would say is use the tiny SA if you need a basic spectrum analyzer for signal detection or monitoring. If you work with lower frequencies and don't require detailed component analysis, and you want something simple for troubleshooting. You would use the Nano VNA if you're dealing with RF components and need to measure S parameters, impedance, or antenna characteristics. If you need to tune or design antennas or test RF circuits, and you require measurements over a wider frequency range. So now let's talk a little bit specifically about the Tiny SA, and then we'll compare it to the Tiny SA Ultra. The standard model operates in two bands, 0.1 MHz through 350 MHz for low frequencies, and 250 MHz to 960 MHz for higher frequencies. The display is a basic color screen with a 2.8 inch diagonal, which is functional, but it's relatively small for detailed analysis. And being candid, I'm a little bit older and I'm running on legacy hardware and I've got older eyes and it's hard to see. The standard Tiny SA has a lower dynamic range and sensitivity, making it suitable for many hobbyists or light professional tasks, but it's not precise for demanding applications. And dynamic range is the difference between your noise floor and the measured signal. The larger the dynamic range, the more specific you can get in your measurements and the more measurements will be available to you. It includes a basic signal generator that can generate test signals, but its range is somewhat limited. The Tiny SA Ultra. The Ultra version significantly expands its frequency range, covering from 100 kHz to 800 MHz in low mode and up to 6 GHz in high mode. This makes the Ultra version far more versatile, especially for analyzing higher frequency signals like those found in Wi-Fi, 5G, or satellite communications. And I understand that that extends beyond what most of us do in amateur radio, but there are some folks that play in the higher frequency. The Ultra has a larger, higher resolution 4-inch display. The larger screen offers more clarity, making it easier to read graphics and data, especially when working with fine details in the spectrum. The Ultra also improves on dynamic range and accuracy, providing higher resolution bandwidths and better sensitivity for detecting weaker signals and analyzing fine details within the RF spectrum. And basically this allows you to get a more granular view of what you're looking at. You have more data points and then you will be able to make more specific and accurate measurements. The Ultra also has a signal generator, but with expanded range and improved precision, allowing you to generate signals over a much broader frequency range and with much better stability. So what does all that mean? The Tiny SA and the Tiny SA Ultra are both spectrum analyzer, but the Tiny SA Ultra is an upgraded version with enhanced capabilities. I really would implore anybody who's looking at making a purchase of a Tiny SA to go ahead and get the upgraded Ultra. It's a significantly better device. The Tiny SA Ultra is a more powerful and versatile tool than the standard Tiny SA with greater frequency coverage, improved precision, and a larger, clearer display. Folks, that's going to wrap this video up. I'd like to thank everybody for watching. It's greatly appreciated. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, or recommendations, go ahead and post them below, and I'll do my best to respond.